hit points than your average damage dealing character and you're going to be in good shape for a lot of duels or even in group fights you know people can't burst you down quite that fast you'll have the opportunity to get off your full combo of course the reason you're really buying phage is for the 25 percent on hit chance to reduce your target's movement speed. It, it ices them up, it slows them down, so if you're able to get this to proc, which will happen on average once every four attacks, you'll slow them down, it makes it much easier to chase people down for a kill. Obviously it's really strong on anyone with any kind of attack speed. If someone's got a really slow attack rate, Phage by itself may not be dependable enough. Of course then you can always upgrade it into a Frozen Mallet, and I'll talk about Frozen... well, I'll talk about Frozen Mallet right now because it's basically the same uh, item. Frozen Mallet is an upgraded Phage. You get a little more... well, the attack damage is pretty much the same. You get a whole lot more health, and the freezing effect happens every time you hit someone. Uh, so it's far, far more dependable. One thing you'll find, a lot of people, when they're building, say, a tank, for an example, they'll go with the Warmog's armor. And when I get to Warmog's, I'll talk about that. But Warmog's gives you straight health, and nothing else, really. It does give you a whole lot of health. But a lot of times, you'll get all the health you need uh, to, to be a good tank just by getting these sort of other items that happen to bring you health. For example, a Frozen Mallet will give you a good chunk of health and helps you uh, kill people by keeping them frozen. You may not be able to finish the kill depending on how much damage you do as a tank, but hopefully you've got your carries around, someone who can do some damage and finish off the fight. At the same time, it's, this is also a stupendous item for a physical character, a physical damage dealing character, especially a melee character, um, because it will give you a lot more survivability, which is really key. A lot of physical DPS are squishy, like I say. Um, and it also guarantees that you can get a kill. If you catch someone one-on-one, -on -one, they will not be able to run away from you with that movement speed decrease, unless they've got, you know, a ton of stuns or, uh, you know, and an exhaust or something, like a big combo to get rid of it. Of course, they can cleanse out of it, though it's rarely worth doing by itself. Um, but yeah, the Frozen Mallet and the Phage are both excellent items. The Phage is fairly inexpensive. The Frozen... Yeah. Like all this freaking noise. That's pretty aggressive. It's, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, here he goes. All right, folks, I got cut off there because I forgot that I have to move my character around from time to time or I'm going to get disconnected. Also, I didn't have any any AI bots put into the game, so that may have affected things as well. So let's continue where we left off, which was basically just finishing up the... Um, uh, what was the, the, the Frozen Mallet, which is an excellent choice for lots of people. And listen, if you're playing a DPS character and you're finding yourself too squishy, try getting a Frozen Mallet from time to time. It'll really help you get the ganks, and uh, it will help you get a lot tougher. Moving on, Catalyst and Protector, excellent item. And I'm going to refer back to the Catalyst in a moment when I talk about the... Um, um, oh, man, what is it called? The Philosopher's Stone. Uh, basically, they, they sort of both do similar things. Um, the Catalyst does give you flat health and mana, um, whereas the Philosopher's Stone doesn't, but it gives you lots of regeneration of both and, and, and some gold per, per turn. But what the Catalyst does, the Catalyst gives you, I'm going to lower the volume a little bit, the Catalyst gives you a little bit of uh, mana and health back every time you level up. In fact, a, a fair chunk. And effectively, that means the Catalyst gives you mana and health regeneration. And when you're at the lower levels where you level up quite often, this adds up to a, a, a pretty convincing amount. Um, it's an excellent item to get for any caster because you can combo it. If you're build it, building it early, which is the time that the catalyst is best, you can then build it into a Rod of Ages, which is another fantastic item to have as uh, any spell caster. And... Um, and another important item to get very early. As a DPSer or a tank, generally speaking, you're not going to end up building Catalyst unless you're going to be building it up to a Banshee's Veil later. But a Banshee's Veil is an extraordinarily powerful item, so it's a good thing to get. Anyway, all that to say, the Catalyst on its own is not necessarily something you're going to be targeting, uh, but as an intermediary step to something else, it's amazing. And it does effectively give you a considerable amount of health and mana regeneration, so much so that the Philosopher's Stone is really a, kind of an obsolete item, and I'll talk about uh, that more when I get to it. Next item, Haunting Guys. And uh, Haunting Guys is was recently redone, and it's quite a good item now. Uh, it gives you... Uh, well, the same ability, power, and health as the uh, the basic items that take to create it, so no change there. Uh, and on top of that, you're paying 575 gold to produce the recipe. Now, what does that give you for 575 gold? Well, it gives you a passive 20 magic resist, 
which is awesome. Magic pen or, yeah, magic penetration, not magic resistance. Magic penetration is an amazing stat that gives you so much bonus damage. In fact, point for point, magic or armor penetration tends to give you a lot more than ability power or attack damage. It's a really valuable stat, and it also stacks really well with other such items. Because one of the things that beginners may not be aware of, magic penetration can actually bring you into the negatives. Let's say you had someone with 10 magic resistance, and you had this item that gives 20 magic penetration. Well, it actually brings them effectively to minus 10 magic resistance and multiplies all your damage. Point for point, penetration gives you a lot more damage than anything else, so that's awesome. In addition to that, it gives you the 10% spell vampirism, which is to say, any damage that your spell makes, 10% of it gets added to you as health. It is, this is basically the equivalent of the lifesteal items that a physical DPSer has it's not a tremendous effect. That 10% doesn't actually add up to that much, um, but it does add up to something. I mean, it's nice. It's a nice bonus. That's not what you get this item for. You get this item for the magic penetration, uh, is more or less what's going on. The spell vampirism is nice in your early stage when you're laning. It will not often save you too much in a group fight. Uh, definitely not soloing. In a group fight with enough AoE, perhaps, but... Um, but yeah, anyway, excellent, excellent item. Really good. The only downside to it, I suppose, is that for a single slot, it's not doing that much. So at a certain point in the game, it, it might be not doing enough for you. If it's a really long game, you might conceivably end up selling this and buying a much more expensive item for that slot. But that doesn't really come up. So it's a really good item. It's something that's definitely worth rushing early on. You could Early on, you could go right away. Amplifying Tome is your first item. Your first trip back to town, finish the haunting guys. You can't go wrong with it. Um, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that choice on virtually any spellcaster. It gives you a lot more survivability because of that health, especially since you don't have a lot. And again, if you com combo Doran's Ring plus this, you're going to have a really respectable amount of health for a spellcaster. Next item, Aegis of the Legion. One of my favorite items in the game, bar none. This thing is awesome, okay? And it's something every team should have, and you should have it before your very first group fight. Uh, because it has such a huge effect. There's so many games, I get to the end of it, and I look at our, you know, either team, and no one's got a, an Aegis of Legion, and that is a huge waste. This has such a huge effect. A, it makes you a lot tougher. It gives you a whole bunch of health, plus a whole bunch of magic, armor and magic resist. And remember, you get the benefit of the aura as well, so you would actually be getting 30 armor and 39 magic resist, and also plus 8 damage. In addition to that, your teammates get some armor, some magic resist, and the plus 8 damage. Um, so it makes you fairly tough, and it makes your teammates a little bit tougher as well. This helps you win group fights. It's awesome. It's fairly cheap. There's no excuse that no one on your team has it. Uh, every team should have at least the one Aegis. Uh, well, I say at least. It pretty much should just have one Aegis. They, they sort of stack, but not really. It's not really worth doing. One Aegis, definitely the way to go, though. Um, I can't recommend it enough. The The only tricky part is finding the right person to carry it. Because it's sort of a downside for one of your carries to have it, because your carries should really be focusing on things that really let them, like, insta-kill people as fast as possible, and maybe increase their personal resistance a lot. So this is something that uh, is really good for a tank to carry, and some types of support characters is also really good. As a tank, I do like to build it, because it gives me the health, gives me the armor, the magic resist, so I find it really helpful, and it encourages people to stick near you. Tell people, hey, I have an Aegis, so let's group up and just follow me, and you'll get the buff and we'll win, it's awesome. Soul Shroud. Soul Shroud gives you a bunch of health, gives mana regen aura, and a cooldown reduction aura. Uh, it's really good. It's actually not bad just for yourself, but obviously it's much, much stronger when you're with someone and it gets increased. Um, this is the sort of item that a support character carries. One, for a couple of reasons. One, most support characters can use the mana regen and the cooldown reduction so that, you know, if you're talking about Morgana, she's got a black shield up more often, or her stun up more often. Um, uh, Janna can, you know, whirlwind more often. All, all these all these little things. It's a really good item for those kinds of people. I also really like to build it on Alistar, because Alistar, it gives them a lot of health, and that's something support characters are often lacking. They're, they're pretty squishy, so give them the health. Um, and on Alistar, it gives them health, helps them become more tanky. Um, and he can really make good use of the mana and cooldown reduction to spam his heal more often. And Alistair does okay without it, much in the way of dedicated tanking items, because he's got his ultimate, makes him so tough. He's got AoE stuns by itself. Um, so he's a really good champion all on his own. 
and uh, so he's a good carry for this sort of things or support character if you're playing a pure support uh, Soraka for example this would not be a bad item to